When you drive around Canada, you're going to see some rural cemeteries pretty much everywhere you go. But have you ever thought of who actually is buried there? They all lived lives, and some lived some fascinating lives, so why don't we learn a bit about the people buried, at least near my hometown of Stony Plain. Today, it's Father Frederick Willie. Frederick Willie was born on August 24th, 1850, and on October 13th, 1874, he married Mary Axt, who was born on August 24th as well, but in 1852. Frederick came west to the Stony Plain area in 1899 with his two sons, John and Edward. One year later, Mary and their daughters Emma, Louisa, Lydia, and son Paul arrived. Two daughters, Sarah and Maggie, stayed in Ontario with their husbands. In the Stony Plain area was Mary's sister and her husband, Israel Umbach, who was a local law enforcement and once chained a train to the track because the rail company wasn't paying its local taxes. Today, there is a statue of Israel in Stony Plain. They had a homestead which was later bought by Harold Jesperson near town. While working to build his homestead up, Frederick also worked as a carpenter for his brother-in-law Israel. He helped build many homes and barns in the area. In 1911, Frederick and Mary's youngest son Paul was tragically killed in a runaway accident at the age of only 18. In 1914, Frederick and Mary moved into Stony Plain, and in 1924 celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary while living in town. Frederick also continued helping his brother-in-law building homes and businesses as well as repairing wooden sidewalks and maintaining the fairgrounds. Throughout his life, Frederick enjoyed gardening and planting many lilacs and shrubberies around town. Mary was active in the Red Cross, the United Church, Ladies' Aid, and the Women's Institute. She loved growing flowers and won many ribbons at the district fair. Following the death of Frederick in 1929, she kept living in Stony Plain and took in boarders to support herself. In 1942, she moved next door to the home of her son. She lived there until 1944, when she moved into the home of her daughter, Emma. She died on April 18, 1945, at the age of 93.